Hey, we're live. Welcome, everyone. August 5th, 2024. I'm Shane Oglo, along with my partner, Richard Hodges. And uh, hey, we're the Rogue Traders. And uh, a little bit off script, uh, a little bit of uh, a surprise session today. Normally, we do Darabit Live on Thursdays. This isn't really Darabit Live. It's more of a Darabit kind of emergency. Everyone needs a group hug. Uh, what the <laughs> hell's going on in the world? Um, you know, I usually start things off, you know, on this day in history, and then I try to make some uh, – clever segue but on this day in history bitcoin dropped 18 <laughs> percent today <laughs> uh, and the financial world ended yeah so <laughs> we've got a lot a lot to talk about there's a lot of stuff going on there's a lot of moving parts never mind the bitcoin component um and i i think that uh, it really warrants a discussion there's probably I don't know how many liquidations there was last night across the uh, board. I suppose we'll go a little bit later. Well, I've read a billion dollars so far. A billion so far. <laughs> not too surprising. We, we know people are always leveraged long. Uh, even if you're not over leveraged, you know, a big move can can smack you, and, and, and it can happen. Um, mm. So, so let's uh, let, let's uh, just sort of calm things down, put things in perspective. Talk about what's going on, uh, what we might expect to continue to happen, both in the Bitcoin market and uh, some elements of TradFi and uh, on a broader, you know, central banking issue. And then, hey, you know, what can we do? Well, what have we got going on? Some of our accounts got hit. Some are up. Why? What's the difference? You know, obviously, if we've got a long strategy like the synth minor strategy we normally share with everyone, that's going to take a hit because it's a long strategy. What do you expect? You know, if you buy Bitcoin, it goes down, you know, you're underwater. So I think those things need to be discussed. And um, if people want to have a bit of Q&A, we can do that. If you've got uh, difficult positions or you've, you're having a hard time understanding what's happening to your account, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're happy to sort of discuss those things and talk about it. So let me just share. Uh, I just got a slide here with the topic. Uh, basically, it's, you know, sink or swim right now. Uh, this could, could sink people. We could keep going or it could be. This could be an incredible opportunity, I think, uh, and for a lot of people. And it really depends on where your mindset is at, where you are. Your... What film does that remind me of? Where oh, that reminds me of Friends, where uh, um, what's his name? Um, who's the dorky one? Um, oh, the Chandler? Ch Ch no, not Chandler. No, no, no. The, the tall, the goofy one. guy I don't like very much. David Schwimmer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's talking to Isabella Rossellini. And he says, Elizabeth, this could be a great opportunity. And she goes, yeah, for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, I, I was never a huge Friends fan, but well, I watched a few episodes. More of a Seinfeld. I, I was a bit, bit more of a Isabella, Isabella Rossellini fan. Ah, oh, gotcha. Yes, yes. So Bitcoin right now is about 51,000. It's kind of hanging around 50 yeah. to 51. We've had a little bounce up to around 53 or so a few hours ago. So it's kind of found its legs. Uh, U.S. market just opened. VIX at 62. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, we were so used to so, VIX being around 12. So let, let's cover off the sort of macroeconomics. Sure. Behind yeah. it. So so, so the, the news at the moment in the Bitcoin markets is that, you know, Jump have been selling, program selling Bitcoin. Um, and the rumor is that BlackRock have been program buying it. Uh, on the on the dips, and jump was selling. We're help. We're selling on behalf of. We're helping a miner to dump, dump, um, and that's the, that, that miner is now out of the game because they're bust, and the Bitcoin hash rate has then now gone up for uh, as a result. I don't know how true any of that is because I don't. I don't. I, I used to work with some of the guys at Jump, but I don't speak to them these days. Not not for any. You know, I just don't have calls to, and they wouldn't tell me anyway. Um, uh, that's probably less relevant than the fact that the entire dollar yen carry trade is under threat. Um, uh, since uh, interest rates on the Bank, the Bank of Japan rose to 0.25% back in March, which is an infinity percent jump from zero or neg negative or, or you know, more than infinity from negative, um, you could no longer now borrow yen at zero and spend it on us assets and of course wall street being wall street people were borrowing yen at stonking levels of leverage that would make crypto degens look tame uh, to buy to then use stonking levels of leverage to go and buy us assets um, such as treasuries and stocks and so on 
And the result is that I keep banging on about this, even though Intel has dumped 25% or it did last Friday, its PE price earnings ratio was still 80, 89 times. Mm. And just to put that into context, that means that if you own Intel, or if you owned Intel on Friday, it's probably a bit worse now, you were betting $89 for every dollar of future annual income. So you were saying, mm. here's my $89, take that, put that at risk, and I'm happy to receive a dollar in income per year. Um, and if I'm wrong, you can keep my 89, 89 bucks, which I think is utter degeneracy, right? That's like that's literally 89 times leverage um, on your on your returns. And even if you even if you were right and it was going to return a dollar a year, uh, you wouldn't live long enough to actually mm. see your money double. So what's the, what's the point? So mm. that that's the level of degeneracy that we've we've been seeing in the U.S. markets. And if the carry trade is going to unwind, and that's going to very much depend on a whether the Bank of Japan, the bank, and the Fed want to stop it unwinding by suddenly creating super uh, 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 low interest rate environments again, or whether they can, whether the U.S. dollar could survive that in in global markets now that China is no longer a subordinate nation, um, and people have been buying gold, uh, uh, I. This is unknown, and so I think that's that's the reason the reason for the or part of the reason for the high levels of volatility we're seeing. So the, the VIX at sixty five, that's definitely sell territory. By the way, um, the Bitcoin this morning vol was one hundred and five at the money. Uh, mm. The one month it's, it's now a bit less, but um, uh, it's, it's still more than one hundred volume within within a one, one week. By the way, mm -hmm. um, so and it's, it's that uncertainty that's creating the vol, and. I haven't even mentioned the um, the sideshow of the you know beginning of Armageddon at the hands of the Israelis and the Iranians, but actually that's that is actually a sideshow. That's a choreographed war, I believe, which has no effect on any of this really. It just acted as a catalyst. And then the again side sideshow of the earnings report, or sorry, the unemployment numbers that came out of the U.S. on Friday, mm -hmm. utterly irrelevant to any of this stuff. But it's a nice catalyst and it's a nice news story to pin the blame of this fall on unemployment numbers. But when the hell did a slight increase in unemployment cause a mm. mega sell off in global markets? It, it never did. Right. Uh, the, there's something more fundamental at stake. Mm. And what's fun, what's under, at stake is the is this threat of under, unwinding the carry trade. Um, and that's that's what's what we're seeing in Bitcoin. Um, and just to finish that off, uh, that's your thoughts off. I believe this is long-term bullish for Bitcoin um, uh, and gold and, and anything hard currency, because um, unwinding the carry trade means a massive global deleveraging event globally, um, mm. and uh, people are going to want to flee to harder assets. Um, so rather than some bullshit tech offering that promises to print a thousand X, you know, uh, one day in the future, they're going to want things that actually print the money. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's a good point. And it, you know, this could be a, a really incredible opportunity um, mm -hmm. for buying. And I think that you know, we're going to see the numbers come up tomorrow is, is BlackRock buying. I suspect that they're, they're buying it all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, we saw uh, the market just bounced a little bit here, small, nothing significant, but it's kind of hanging around this area. I do kind of feel that, well, I, I can share a chart in a little bit, but, um, you know, we might look back in two weeks or one month or six weeks or two months and go, oh, man, what an opportunity, just like we saw with every other big dip. The, the long-term um, macro situation on Bitcoin, to me, hasn't changed yet. There's no reason that we should think that, oh, this thing's going to 15,000 or to zero or anything if anything um the the corporates in the states are the the the, the financial elite are absolutely behind bitcoin now you you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're no longer the rebels owning bitcoin mm -hmm. you are you are you're, you're now the pawns in in the big chess game um so um uh jp morgan um come wednesday will be allowing their mm -hmm. uh, advisors to suggest to high net worth americans that they include the BlackRock ETF in their portfolios. Mm -hmm. That is, so, so by high net worth, what that means is any American with a net worth of more than $1.5 billion, which is, let's face it, 
all Americans, you know, are the ones that are, are <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not unusual to have a million bucks sure. of net worth in the States, right? Worth, yeah. Own a house yeah. and, and have a bit of savings and some stock. You, mm. You've got a million bucks, right? Um, yeah. I think we need to start running some type of Wolf of Wall Street operation where we've got a call center in our homes and we're just calling people. What if I could get you in at 50 and get you out at 200? <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes. I've, I, I, I forgot to uh, say hi to everyone who coming in. Uh, some of our regulars are a bit here. Corey Gendry, Vladimir, Johannes. And, you know, Johannes, yes, praised be the 3X cover gods. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. we're going to talk a little bit about about that. Well, we can talk about that right now. So, uh, well, I, I, again, can show you, I can show you on my screen if you want. Um, I can, I can yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead, and I'll just I'll, I'll right. just mention too something while you're while you're loading that up is last night I, I on one of the prop accounts I had to control margin, so I was buying some fifty eight thousand puts for two to three basis points, and I think I bought a, a bitcoin or point on a bitcoin on a, one account. Well, when I woke up this morning, of course. There was carnage, and that extra coverage, just because it was there to control margin, was worth a boatload, and my account was actually at a new high. Um, now, I didn't realize all of that profit because I didn't sell it all, but, uh, boy, that double, triple covering. Now, this was more than double or triple, but uh, it, mm. it, it can save your bacon uh, when, when the market takes a move. Yeah. So here, here you see on the screen, I don't know if you can yeah. see this if it's big enough. Let me zoom in here. Yeah, that's so a here, bit better. So here, here's a position that you um, rather um, foolishly took. Was it last night or this morning? Um, 52K puts short, which you thought was a <laughs> sure thing, right? No, no, that was this morning. I liked yeah. it. I, I still <laughs> like it. I still like um, it. I think we're going to be okay. And uh, but you you went three you went three x cover thank thank God I think you, you called me and said I'm going to do this one one by two and I said what about one by three and you were like yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you're on your way to the bus station or the airport or something I don't know um, and actually even though this position's under, underwater this and this was actually uh, five minutes ago we were a thousand dollars lower and this was even more apparent mm -hmm. but look this 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 one one short is worth four sixty five basis mm -hmm. points per Bitcoin and the cover is worth one sixty seven. But of course, there's three of them. So times three, that's 470. Mm -hmm. So actually, the cover is worth currently more than the than the put spread than, than the short put. Yeah. So so you, you we sold we sold this at a credit, and we and we could buy it back at an even bigger credit today right now. And this is the magic of one by threes. They're they're really really volatile and nice in this kind of market because mm -hmm. you you get really good opportunities to be wrong and then be right and and uh, and get and get out. Yeah. Um, you can see that or down here, down here in, the, some... in the position report here. Yeah. You can see that the the, the actual um, yeah. So the, there's there's the the PNL uh, mm -hmm. of that position. So we're actually four basis points positive in PNL. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you can just buy it back, or you can roll it, or whatever you want to want to do with it, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Or we could choose to sell point one of those point three, take some cash off the table to say, okay, we think there could be a bounce here. Yeah, could do that. And let it go up. We we could do that. Um, although, although I, I, if, you, if you think the market's going to continue down, so that that's the kind of thing I would do if if we actually got down below forty eight. I'd be thinking, okay, I'm going I'm going to take two point two of that cover off and mm. reap in the profits, and then I'll I'll just leave that call mm. spread in the money as just a, a, basically it's a free it's a free call, sorry a put spread in put the spread. money, but in the yeah. in the money put spread is effectively a free call spread, mm. um, or a, a call spread that you've already Fires paid for. <clears throat> oh no, that that that, that explains <clears throat> on Friday. That, that's the ninth. I thought it was tomorrow, but it's the ninth. Yeah. Uh, actually, let me let me uh, and again, if anybody has any questions, just dump them in the chat, and, and we'll we'll chat uh, later on. Uh, let me just share my screen here. Uh, I, think, uh, I think there is there is already one question. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll just share this first, and we'll go over there. So, I can, can you you can see my screen, Richard? Um, Am my mouse moving around? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay, great. So, I was. It was interesting. Just before this call, I was. I was. I was looking at this, and look, we, this is this is an eighteen percent move, right? From from from. Um, uh, oh, it's actually from from up here, from yesterday to today, from from tip to tail, about eighteen percent. Huge. I mean, that that's a that's a massive move. And I was thinking, well, huh? When's the last time we had a move that big? And I was like, well, back here, no, no, that's like you know twelve or thirteen percent. That wasn't so big. 
Hmm. Uh, uh. Interesting. The last time we had a move, 18% plus was on the way up. 25% move. Now that happened over over a couple of days from the level we're at right now. Isn't that interesting? I can pull that over right here, and it matches up perfectly. The other thing that's worth noting is it just hit the unicorn. Uh -oh. Unicorns are rare and wonderful creatures. And we just went to the unicorn. So this is a rare and wonderful time to do something. Now, if you had a flat account, Richard, let's say you just got dropped on planet trading and you said, oh, Richard, your, your job every day is just to trade. And here's an asset and you've got some, you know, some money to buy something. What would you do right now? Look at this chart. You'd probably start buying. Yeah. 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 Or, or at least scaling in. You know, there's nothing saying this thing can't go down to 40,000 where there's a larger area of support. But every single time we've had this crazy dip down, crazy dip up, crazy dip up, crazy dip up. We're, we're taught, you know, in option school 101, when something is moving one way and it's going against some positions, what are you doing? You're selling options on the opposite side. So as it's plummeting, you're selling calls to earn income while it's going down. You know, nothing too controversial about that. It's pretty basic stuff. It's super, super important that if you're doing that, you're covering them off at least 2x, maybe 3x. Super, super important because every single time this has happened in the past, it's down here and it's threatening at 54, 55 like it was at the beginning of July. And you were selling, you know, 60,000 calls against it. All of a sudden, those are $10,000 against you. Holy guac of freaking moly, right? <laughs> Why won't that happen again? Well, are we going to see a bounce to 60? I don't know, but the chances are pretty damn good. It's Bitcoin. But that's the fact that we had this up move on this side to create this range that we've been in for several months. And then a huge move on the other side to cap it off is quite interesting. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, a, a bit of volatility. I, wouldn't, I, I kind of thought on the U.S. Open, we might poke our way down to 45 or something, 44, 43. I was hoping for that, actually. Uh, and then, boom, we're up above 50, uh, 55 or something like that again. Now, that did not happen. In fact, we're bouncing up a little bit now, 52 and a half right now. Quite interesting. We can see everything selling off. I think the futures here, uh, oil, I was talking about oil. It's actually taking a bit of a bounce. We've got the VIX, 53. It was just at 60-something. Uh, we've got the S&P. It's taking a bit of a bounce, too. So I, I, I kind of like, I like a lot of these things here to... I don't want to say buy because it's going up because I don't know. We could be going down to 40, but if we go on patterns, you know, this could be an incredible opportunity or at least to start scaling in. Uh, is this going to be the bottom? Is the bottom going to be here? Is it, you know, I don't know, but I, I think we just have to look at, at, at the past and, and not get too panicky. The other thing I wanted to share with you is, and, and Richard pointed this out. So we just had one of our, we had our members call with our rogue trader Academy members. It was a great call. And uh, we wanted to take a look at this uh, S&P. And if we look at the daily chart, so what? So what? You know, yeah, sure, it's a big move. Yes, could it be the part is part of like like a freaking, you know, you know, avalanche that ends up being, you know, a, a big, bigger, longer term bear market? I don't know. I mean, it could be. But I mean, look, we're still we're above 5,000. And it's just, you know, it's just part of the natural cycle. Here's a massive, oops, a, a massive, a much, much larger move over here way back in, in, in February, right? Look at that. that that's, a, that's a pretty sizable move that happened over a couple of days at 35%. They quickly retraced it. So I think that if for a lot of people that are um, very concerned or panicking right now, I don't know. This is kind of normal fare, normal staple for for the Bitcoin. If we step back and look at the macro picture, it's important to 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 not get uh, panicky and wicked out. I think the important thing is is to always maintain discipline with your level of margin, so you can give yourself room to absorb these things. Yes, okay, maybe your equity got cut in half or in a quarter, and it sucks as an option seller, but as long as you can adjust those positions, you can roll it back. You can pull.
pull that back in. And it might take you a week or two or two months. Who knows? But you can do it. And I think that's very, very important. A lot of people are really panicky. Could this be the part, the, the end unwind, the end of free money that everyone's known for the last 30 years? Could be. We could be in for this. Could be a really historic event. Day one. Yeah, we know that Buffett was you know sold half of his Apple shares. Uh, it was, these signals have been coming in the market for a while that was signaling it could be a top. We don't know though. We don't know. Yeah, markets are very dynamic. Do we have uh, questions? <clears throat> Probably. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Sylvanus, even the feds may have an emergency cut, so emergency allowed. Mm -hmm. James, thank you very much. Yes, it's an emergency call. Uh, how do you make money on one by three, not on theta? Well, that's a good question, Brad. Um, you, you you can make a money on one by three. It just depends on where that strike is. Um, the, you know, the further the, away the, from the money it is. The long and short of it is that you're, you're – you could do, you can enter into a one by three, for example, at zero zero cost or for a small credit, um, depending on the market. It depends on how steep the, the smile is. Uh, if the smile is shallow, then you can you can get, go in actually quite cheaply, particularly in short dated one week, two week. Uh, if the smile is steep, then not so cheap. But the 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 premise is in this scenario is that so your risk premium, the, what you've sold, brings you premium to pay for the cover. And what you're hoping to do is get rid of the, the risk premium uh, or get the, the cover to be worth more than the risk premium. So you take a net profit. And what you find on a big market move is that not only will vols increase, but they will increase more the further away from the money you are and in the direction of the move. So that all works in your favor with a one by three. Because as you get in the money uh, into your, on your short leg on, say, puts, your puts then get, start getting in the money. So they start um, essentially becoming inverted calls um so they've got lower vol because the smile is towards the or the skews towards the puts but your uh long puts are accelerating in price at three times the rate of your short puts and so there's a sweet spot in terms of time decay and um and time to run where overall your cut your long legs are worth more than your short legs um, so very, very nice for, for rising bull markets. And we, we like to use them for um, as like a speculative hedge against a big move because it's like a zero cost hedge against a, a massive uh, black swan event. Um, mm -hmm. And it was also something we thought, you know, we, we woke, woke up, well, I woke up at 2 a.m. this morning for some reason. Uh, I actually dreamt that we would see um, 55K Bitcoin. And I woke up with a start and then looked at my phone and saw it at 58. And I thought, yeah, yeah, see, I'm just dreaming, dreaming nonsense. And then literally as I watched my phone, <laughs> the price melted down to 55. <laughs> um, Next time you get the lottery numbers in your dream. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, and then, of course, below. Um, so we, we knew it was going to be, knew, knew it was going to be uh, volatile. So we thought, uh, yeah, open, opening up a one by three is probably not a bad idea. And actually opening up in both directions probably isn't a bad idea, to be honest. Uh, say mm. two, two weeks out, it's probably probably a good trade, in my view. Mm. Um, mm. Um, what, one mm. thing I quickly wanted to mention before we go to the next question is, uh, so this was our previous support and resistance that we, I, I, I had drawn, and we're below that. So a lot of people say, oh, okay, well, that's invalid now. So not not so fast. So if it wicks down here and stays down here for a week or two, well, sure, yeah, it's, it's probably invalid. This, this might turn into resistance and bonk our head. But if we move back up into the zone and we grind back up, wick, wick through support and resistance areas happen all the time. So to me, this, this support zone is not invalid yet from a technical standpoint because it uh, – you know, it needs to close and stand there for a little bit. Little poke throughs they happen all the time. That's why I kind of thought that that uh, I thought we'd see a, a, a crazy capitulation wick, you know, down to forty one or something, just crazy. Right? I was kind of hoping for that. That still might happen. Uh, I, I don't think the more time goes by, if, you know, the less that's probably likely to occur. But uh, you know, we used to seeing those things, and and they they, they skew people's uh, interpretation. So I tell you, tell you one thing. I think I, I was literally not just on a, on a client call uh, with a, with a hedge fund client who was actually asking, you know, called me and said, "What what should we do?" <laughs> and um, uh, my advice was actually 
I, I, I think there's been program buying, selling, selling for sure, but there's definitely program buying going on as well. Uh, and that program buying is not leveraged. And I think mm. anyone who was leveraged is now wrecked. And they're going to be stay, they're going to stay wrecked for like two weeks or a month before they could get um, confidence to come back in. So I think that the buying we're seeing that's supporting the price here is solid money that is going nowhere. That's mm. my my gut feeling. Uh, and, and please don't trade on the basis of this because I you know um, I, I just told you that I did a trade on the basis of a dream for God's sake. So you know, um, <laughs> um, but we are at the full moon. And we are we are at the full moon as well, which is always good good for uh, uh, sorry the new moon, which is always good for stocks. Yeah, oh, uh, in the, um, uh, no, but I think so. I think anyone who was leveraged long is now wrecked and unable to get leveraged long again, right? So they can't exacerbate the problem because they're dead. And uh, and actually, you know, the the guys at Derabit could probably tell me, and that's my gut feeling, but I'm sure they could tell me the numbers of how many of their customers got wrecked, right? And Binance could do the same. Um, and that means that all the buying now is so, is cash, cash money, mm. which is good, which will go nowhere. Uh, and I, I suspect if I were BlackRock and I had and I knew that my product was about to be sold by the second biggest bank in America to the people on, with, in, on Earth with the most money, um, I would be I would be gobbling up as much Bitcoin as I possibly could. And if anything, I'd have uh, you know, and if I, th I knew that was coming, being the evil Machiavellian guy I am, I would have made a phone call to jump and ask them to do this uh, i'm not saying mm -hmm. i'm just saying i would do it right so it it, it all starts to, to me to smell of this is probably a fairly fairly good place to start scaling in from for myself mm -hmm. i see a headline here uh, futures plummet as vix hit 62 japan suffers the worst point drop in history <clears throat> Yeah, uh, and we were talking with our members on our call too because I trade quite a bit of currencies. Is I'm still not wanting to buy the yen yet. I think there might be more. Yeah, the might, the, the thing is, more. it's a dice roll, right? Will Will the Bank yeah. of Japan intervene? Won't they? Can they? Yeah. If they do, yeah. does it? I mean, man, trying to pick the bottom is too hard on there. And if you you do want to get in, I always scale in. So it's like, yeah, it goes against me. Not a big deal. I'll just average it. In, but but just just be be very yeah. careful. I think. One thing I keep thinking about is if, let's say, the Fed do want to fix this and want to and say, screw it, we're going to bring interest rates down to zero again. We're going to bootstrap the economy and make everything great again, you know, mm. in our own in our own sort of horrible way. Um, is the U.S. carrier fleet enough of a threat to everybody else today to to let them get away with that, like they did in two thousand and one and two thousand and five and seven, right, and, and eight? Do are they are, is the U.S. taken as seriously as it was? Well, you've only got to look at what's going on in the Middle East. We've got Iran thumbing its nose at the US. I mean, they, they know not to push it too far, but they're pushing it, right? You've got Russia pushing it in Ukraine. Uh, you've got China uh, pushing it with, uh, what's it called, Philippines. Um, everyone's flexing, right? And the US isn't, isn't stamping it out. So I don't think the US has the moral, the, the, right, the might is right moral authority to get away with zero interest rates again. I think that could mm. cause a run on 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 the US. Yeah, we see the US dollar very weak, very weak this morning. It's yeah. uh, it's off its lows right now, but uh, it could be the part of a a bit of broader trend. So I'll be very careful on the currencies there. So uh, and and putting my money where my mouth is, what I'm doing, uh, and this is not by no means advice. I'm just telling you what I'm doing uh, is I'm buying a little bit of Bitcoin and I'm buying uh, as much gold as I can as I can get. Mm, yeah. Uh, I think gold has bounced a little bit too. It was, uh, uh, yeah, down about two percent right now. But, but uh, I mean, it's, yeah, but down nothing, right? Because it's still at what twenty four hundred. Bitcoin's bouncing right now. Yeah, uh, let's see the uh, gold twenty. Yeah, just under twenty four hundred right now. Gold. I mean, it's, that's still high compared to like three months ago, right? Yeah, yeah. When I was looking at the chart, I thought, oh boy, I don't want to really buy that, and it, if it gets down. You know, eighteen hundred or something. I can't remember what the number was. I, I'm not a gold bug. I, 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 I'll, I'll pay twenty five, four hundred bucks for gold every day of the week for the next forever. Forever. Yeah. You like Goldfinger from 
from Austin Powers. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, of God. But, <laughs> I can't do the Dutch accent. There's, the thing is that Bitcoin is good because um, you can only you can't produce any more Bitcoins without without everyone agreeing to modify the algorithm or starting a new blockchain and agreeing that to use that one instead. But gold is good because in order to get more gold, you've got to cause a supernova, and and mm. no one can do that. It'll start mining asteroids, Richard. Oh, right. Well, okay. So, I mean, you know, once you, once you get to the point where you've got a whole inf spatial infrastructure for, for mining and transporting gold from asteroids, let's talk again. But until then, we'll have to, we'll have to get Elon Musk on one of our calls. Hey? What do you think? Yeah, that'd be good, right? Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, yeah, Core says 48K was an important level to hold. Yeah, it, it very well could be. Um, it looks like for now it's held, and I wouldn't be surprised. Next day, a bit live, maybe not this week, but next week, if we're back in the 60s going, holy crap, what a week, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that's going to happen, yeah, but I mean, we've got a question this, we? There's a question here. How long do you have to wait? If you're deep in the money put spreads, 61 to 56, dated 16th of August, what is the best timing and approach for rolling that position? I think if it was me, I would just buy futures. Mm. And leave and it. wait and see. Mm. Yeah, but buy some puts, buy some futures, and and leave it run. That's, that's, I think I think that would be that is actually what I'm doing on my book. And August sixteenth is, is is an eternity in Bitcoin time. Yeah, it's forever. By the way, by that time there could have been declaration of war, in which case stocks will go up. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you see the price of Raytheon this morning? It was like a vertical. Uh, no. No, you know, you know no. the Bitcoin meme where, where you know, they start, like, come on, do something, and yeah. then it, it zooms up and blows them in the head. That's exactly what, <laughs> it's exactly what U.S. defense futures did this morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, we could have we could have had the central bank slashing rates to yeah. three and a half percent. We could have had Bank of Japan saying, "Screw it, we're going back negative again." Yeah. We could have had. We could have anything. We could have all of the central banks getting together and saying, "We can't have this. We need a more managed." You know, we could be anywhere. Paul's also asking, he's saying, "Is it too late uh, to do a one by three now that vol is one hundred plus?" Uh, could you do it on the ups? I wouldn't. I would I do it on the downside now? Two fifty. You could do it. You could do it now. You could sell the fifty-two, like we've got. We've we're short the fifty-two and long the forty-eight for That's Friday. This Friday, yeah. And you you get a credit for it. I think one fifty, one fifty-one to two twenty-two. Uh, uh, no, it'd be, it'd be zero value. It'd be zero value. Yeah, you could do it, cheap. and you could probably do it on the upside for zero value. I suspect. Um, I mean, yeah, you could anywhere. Uh, say fifty-five. Pay. You could you could receive two sixty. Oh, yes. And then pay, like for. You could pay for fifty nines times three. It's moving. It's, I wouldn't do it now. It's moving around a lot, but yeah, we're almost there. at fifty four now. Yeah. But but for for certain for for disaster for disaster, um, it's always nice to have tail risk on and having uh, some yeah. one by threes in there is is always, is always nice and. And I understand people's reluctance sometimes, you know, by buying tail risk or doing these one by threes. It feels like you're just throwing money out the window. And most of the time, let's be frank, you are. Um, yeah. But yeah. but boy, it saves your bacon sometimes. Uh, and I just hap so happened to have margin control tail risk on, which paid me what two thousand percent return or whatever the hell it was. It was yeah. it was it was it was nuts. Uh, it since, happens a few times a year. Ever since Thursday, I've had ten um, percent down. Put cover on. Um, so I, I'm in, in a book where I'm normally writing positions that's in size 0.2 or 0.1 of a Bitcoin. I had cover on a, a, a Bitcoin, one Bitcoin for Friday, one uh, for Saturday, Sunday, uh, and I had another two and a half Bitcoin cover for this Friday coming coming up. And the Saturday Sunday stuff all got in the money, so that I paid like two basis points a day for that, and it paid off like 250 basis points. I mean. Mm. And, and and the stuff on Friday, I think I paid 20 basis points total, so like three basis points yeah. a day for it. And um, I must admit this morning I had a pang, a pang in my heart, pang, a P-A-N-G pang, because I thought, huh, here I am. I'm selling these, these uh, I'm selling for 300, 350 basis points, these things that I bought last night for two basis points. And I had a pang 
for the person who sold them to me at two basis points. Wow. Yeah. Imagine, imagine, imagine selling anything at two basis points. I mean, unless you're trying to clean up, you know, just before expiry. But... Okay. But if you're selling it to, for, to, to make money, it's like, wow. You got, you got to be, <laughs> you got to be insane. Yeah. That's, that's the proverbial pennies in front of a, Steamroller, right? Uh, okay, breaking question news. from... Oh, breaking news. U.S. stock market sees massive 1.93 trillion loss. That's Holy. Nasdaq, plummets a thousand points. Guacamole. Are you reading that on the Darabit uh, news feed? No, that's on or... WarX on Telegram. That's, uh, it's, like, yeah, it's like a trillion here, a trillion there. Sooner, sooner or later, you're talking real money. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> uh, question from Johannes. Uh, one by threes. There's a point where theta flips negative. What's a good start for rolling or waiting? That's a real good question. Yep. Uh, my rule of thumb is that I will roll unless I think it's going to carry on going down. Uh, if, if I'm in the money on the cover, then I'm happy to sell enough cover so that I'm still covered. So if mm. it's on a one by three, so on that on that 52, 48, one by three, for example, if we got down to say 46, I'd be happy to sell uh, one, 0.1 or 0.2 of the of the cover and leave the 0.1 in covering the the, the 0.1 short, something like that. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're, did, you're always looking to get out of profit, right? Did we sell a third of those 48 long puts? I can't remember. You're, you're sure. No, no, we, we we were discussing it, but we're, we've ah. missed we've missed missed our chance now because the, the the market's now at fifty three and a, fifty three and a yeah. half. Yeah. So all we'll do is if it expires above here tomorrow, then all we'll do is collect the uh, the premium we we, we collected yeah. from from selling, which wasn't a ton, maybe it was sixty basis points or something. Uh, but yeah. uh, so so my trade was a good one, Richard. I think you, you know, called me bone boneheaded earlier, but uh, you know, hey, trader instincts have a deal with twenty five years. No, no, I'd never be so rude. <laughs> I, 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 it was aggressive, you know, but um... <laughs> joking. Uh, question from Vladimir. I think I have think interested question. Okay, I think I have an interest. How, how do you think we break a level or just updated the bottom? Well, I think I, I think I did talk about that too uh, by the chart. I, I don't consider that support invalid unless we kind of close and hold below there a little bit uh, to punch through it um, is really not that uncommon in anything, never, never mind Bitcoin, but any volatile assets. A lot of time I trade currencies, same thing. You know, when it pokes in through a support or resistance area, uh, it, it's not invalid for me unless it decides to kind of close and hold there. And then it's like, okay, it's, it, that's, it's done. Uh, but it is an industry, and I'm not a super chart technician guy. I only use three things when, I, when I'm trading that style of trading. Um, and I, I'm using uh, market direction. I'm using support and, and, and resistance. And I'm using price action. That's it. Uh, I don't use any fancy Fibonacci's. I don't do anything else because I find that so often those other indicators just align with whatever else I'll, what, what the market's telling me, anyways. Hmm. Uh, so it just. Uh, and um, also, if you if you do what everyone else does, you're going to get what everyone else gets, right? And most people get wrecked. Yeah, yeah. And that's why for, for beginning traders, I always say, hey, this is a good spot where you think you're going to get in. Great. Do it at one fifth of their size or one tenth of your size. And if it goes against you, are you prepared to scale it? If that's your strategy, okay. Are you going to hedge that off? That's okay. Uh, or if you're just going to stop yourself out, that's okay too. But it's it's a, at a fraction of, of, the, uh, of the size and you can live to trade another day, which is the most important thing. Uh, I think that's it for questions so far. Um, let me see. Where's the uh, the market? Uh, Fifty-three-three. So a little bit of a pullback. Went almost up to fifty-four there. That's that's kind of looking like it, like a capitulation, isn't it? A little bit. Well, every single time we have these moves down, we get up, down, up, down, up before it. In the past, it's gone up again. Whether it does mm -hmm. or not, we'll see. But I wouldn't be surprised if we went back down to 51 again or 49 or something. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at, at the least. Um, and then it won't give you an opportunity to get on board long. It'll, it'll be a, a brief window. It's not going to slowly grind yeah. to 60 it'll, it'll, if it does. Uh, I, I, there's actually a chunk of uh, leveraged short liquidity at 60K, which is waiting, waiting to get hosed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, when I was looking at the heat map earlier today, too, uh, it looked like everyone just whoop, was gone, which is not surprising. 
mm. but it's mostly on the, on the long side now. Um, mm. and it's not a ton. There's no, most actually, people have been wiped out. Yeah. The, 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 the most is at 60 K and it's 28 million. It's nothing. Mm. Yeah. I suppose we'll see the headlines come out later this afternoon uh, and tonight on you know the extent of the damage. Uh, you know how, what were the liquidations on Binance, for example, yeah, uh, and other ones. Um, and I think I think uh, Israel are probably about to start invading um, Iran or Lebanon. Lebanon or whatever, and, and yeah. pro- probably hitting Ir- Iranian assets and calling Iran out for being a paper tiger and all that, which they are. And um, Iran actually spend has more troops. To keep its own population from re- revolting, than it does to attack other people. Mm. Uh, Iran has no has, has no means to fight a war; they're just full of no. air. That's why that's why they keep threatening Armageddon and never do it. And um, so I think we're going to see Israel attack, and I think they'll do nothing about it, and the markets will be very cheered up by that. It's mm. my, my little prediction. Nick says he's heard it was about one billion in liquidations overnight. Could be. Uh, I don't know. Was that is that cumulative? Uh, Nick? No, I, I I heard the same number. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, let's just take a look at some other news feeds here, but uh, and some other stuff. But you know, I, I look at other different crypto assets. You know, they're weak, but you know, nothing was was necessarily crashed. I think ETH got down to what twenty two hundred or something. It's twenty two thirty nine uh, right now. Or no, sorry, that's the wrong that's the wrong feed. Boy, I got too many damn screens here. What am I looking at? Uh, where's ETH? Yeah, twenty three forty five. Yeah, yeah, it went down as low as uh, two thousand or just above two thousand. I think this morning um, mm-hmm. when everything was was crapping its pants. So uh, I th- I think that the the whole point of this call was that uh, a lot of people were freaking out. Big that uh, big move. Let, let's face it, you know, eighteen percent in in one day is pretty big. On top of the weakness we've seen, uh, we just came from seventy thousand for Christ's sakes. That that's 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 sizable, mm. and um, you know some people are stressed. We we were doing things kind of going long in the low sixties, thinking, oh yeah, 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 you've kind of been here before. You're always aware that it could go down. We've got accounts which are are long oriented accounts, like the Synth Miner. It's it's been slammed, you know. It is going to take us a little while to pull that back, but it's not going to change our philosophy for that particular account. And we have other accounts that have done much better, or or maybe at highs, but they were. There were different strategies. I think it, right. it depends on on how good Israel are at taking out Iranian assets. I think if if they do a good job and make put on a good show for us, then I think uh, we'll be back. We'll be back in, in the money. Mm, yeah, and are we going to get? Uh, and this is something we, we we covered on our Rogue Trader Academy call earlier today. Is is there going to be some type of an emergency central bank news announcement yeah, that, that, session? That, that. That is a wild card because if that if that happens, it could go either way. Because it could either be yay, printing money, let's get on board, or it could be oh my god, the world really is coming to an end. Hmm. Um, let's let's uh, and then that uh, and have some massive risk off, you know, mm-hmm. ca- counterintuitive event. So, uh, uh, yeah, we'll see. And I think what I was trying to allude to there is, uh, look, we, we run a lot of books, and we run a lot of different strategies. Um, and you're never going to have them all perform at you know all-time highs all the time. That's that's not trading. That's not realistic. You know your long strategy is going to suffer when things go down. Just like you buy Tesla, Tesla goes down. What are you going to do? You're going to sell it. You're going to wait. You're going to average in. I don't know. It, it's it's up to you. But you're 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 in that position. Well, and most cool is they get, they go on Twitter and start telling everyone how great Teslas are. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I should really buy a Tesla. <laughs> uh, I guess the, the point is, is is have heart because if if you if you're running a, a long strategy and you believe that Bitcoin in you know six months or six years is going to be worth five x or ten x or hundred x, then stick to that strategy. You know if if that's what what you believe, don't don't get spooked out by one day in the market. I've seen this a thousand times. I was there trading on a trading floor during nine eleven. Guess what happened after that? Holy shit! Straight to the moon. I was there trading during the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis. Well, guess what? Straight to the freaking moon afterwards. But it liquidated a lot of people, or disheartened a lot of people. It uh, might. I, I believe in the next over the next ten years, you will be able to sell a bitcoin at a million dollars, and you'll be able to buy a bitcoin at one dollar. <laughs> so we're going to. Uh, that's quite the hedge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if you could just I, tell me when exactly. Well, yeah, uh, that's what that's what I think. Yeah. 
Uh, Vladimir uh, says, yeah, by the way, if you remember, I said the Bitcoin gives you the opportunity to trade futures and make future spread buying back with huge moves. For example, today I saw 8% premium rather than it was 12% a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, you, get, you get the implied interest rates. Yes. They're, they're, they're low right now. If you wanted to buy futures, if you need, need to buy futures to hedge stuff, now's probably not a bad time. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because when when the market does st- does start r- ripping back, that impl- the uh, the carry costs on the perps are going to be horrific. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I always uh, one of the questions we had were our little discussion in our Discord channel for Rogue Trader Academy this morning uh, was about buying perps or or dated futures, <clears throat> and uh, the the perps can burn you if you hold them too long. They're great for a short term hedge uh, that they've got their their uses but uh, if you're if you're thinking of holding something you're probably going to be better off with dated futures and you can always roll them if it doesn't do what you want by the time you they expire well we've probably bored our audience long enough right yeah probably <laughs> there's, there's, there's no more questions uh, we just we're here this is the emotional support call <laughs> We're here if you need us, um, and if you want to talk to us more about your misery or your successes, uh, <laughs> you can join Rogue Trader Academy, and uh, and we can all uh, yeah. you know, share it. Other, yeah, other than that, I really hope that a lot of people get liquidated, and if your equity is down, yeah, hey, join the club. There's lots of people in that situation. Don't get disheartened. Uh, we can you know hold on, or you can adjust. You know That's the beauty I, of options, is you can... I, 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 I spent my morning soothing uh, the emotions of ruffled hedge fund managers. Um, the, the, the strategies I'm running had took a very, very small drawdown because we expect it in this kind of market. But um, other strategies that they're running, um, that you know, pe- people are being hurt all, all, all over the place. Professionals who ought to know better they are being hurt. And um, so, yeah, if, if you're taking a hit, don't worry. Everyone has. All right, everyone. Hey, we'll see you guys for the regular call on Thursday, the re- regular Darabit Live. Uh, see you then. And I, I can almost guarantee you we're going to be at a, a, a probably a very different price than we're at <laughs> yeah. right now. So let's 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 hope it's up. I think most people are into the long, so let's hope it's up. And uh, we'll see everyone on Thursday. Okay, bye. Take care.